Your aquarium plants really want to grow. You, as an aquarist, really want your aquarium plants to grow. So why, in 100% of the cases, aren't your aquarium plants just booming? The answer is simple. We shouldn't be asking ourselves, what do I need to do to force my plants to grow? We should be asking ourselves, what do I need to remove that's in the way of my plants growing. Now, I know that might sound weird to hear, but it's a very subtle change that makes all the difference. In this video, we are going to be breaking down what might be inhibiting your plant's growth so that you can remove that, fix it, and watch your plants grow effortlessly. The reason why plants are unbelievably goaded for your aquarium is simple. There's three main things. One, the aesthetic. Aquascaping is based on that. So the fact that there's like a hobby within a hobby, all based on like proportions of your tank and plants shows that there's a lot that plants have got to play. The second reason, which is the main reason that I like to rely on them, except for the aesthetic factor, is they're functional. When your fish produce waste, that waste turns into ammonia. That ammonia is then turned into nitrites. Those nitrites are then turned into nitrates. And there's nothing that you can add to your tank that will remove nitrates except for water changing, which is removing the actual water or plants. So why not just do that and complete the ecosystem? Some plants are much better than others at sucking nitrates out of your tank. At any rate, all plants do it at some level. And for someone like me who likes breeding and tends to overstock tanks and upgrade filtration, instead of having less inhabitants, I tend to have more filtration and more plants. It's very useful because it's so utilitarian. The third reason why plants are so awesome is because of the habitat that they create. Plants come in all shapes and sizes and some fish like this shape, other fish like that shape. It's all about selecting the right plant to go with the right fish. Now there are so many other reasons why plants are awesome. I could literally talk about this all day, but that's not the point of this video. This video is about what do you need to change to make your plants grow so much faster. Now there's difficulties growing plants at every different stage of keeping them. So I'm gonna talk about the first stage, which is generally once you acquire your plants. A lot of people will go to the aquarium store and pick up bundles of plants that are like stems wrapped and kept in a bunch. You buy that bunch, bring that bunch home. Now, what most people don't know is that plant is already going through a fundamental change. Because these plants are generally grown in greenhouses and they're not even grown underwater. They're just grown outside of the water, sprayed with so much water to keep the humidity at 100% and they grow like that because they can slam the lights on and they're actually growing immersed, meaning outside of water. Then when it's time to ship them off to an aquarium store, they're snipped and shipped off and then the aquarium will put them in the water which starts the change from being an immersed plant to an immersed plant which means beneath water plants grow better when they have access to atmospheric co2 or really any co2 so if you aren't co2 injecting your aquarium which can be a really expensive endeavor unless you go for the delure fresh range which is a lot cheaper you're essentially like choking your plants out the moment you put them under the water they're going from oh my god this is amazing to wow i can barely find anything to help me grow so that's why when you bring them home from the aquarium store they're really tough to get started a lot of them will lose their leaves even melt all the way down to their stems or even just the roots and then they start to regrow which can be a very very panic, anxiety inducing scenario for someone who doesn't know exactly what's going on. They buy a bunch of plants, put them in the tank, and then what the hell is happening right now? So if you're at the stage of just having bought home your plants from the aquarium store, there's two main things that you can do. The first, CO2 injecting your aquarium so that the difference of CO2 from when they were grown in the greenhouse with full access to CO2 to being underwater isn't as large because you're adding CO2 in the underwater environment for them to help their growth. And the second thing, if you don't want to go the CO2 route, plant your plants the way they like to be planted. These things like to be treated right. So if you've got a stemmed plant, make sure it's planted in the correct way. If you've got a plant that needs to be mounted or glued onto a rock, make sure you do that and don't put it in a situation where it's going to be more stressed. If you want an aquarium planting guide, I'll link it somewhere and follow that link and that'll show you exactly what you need to do. The only other thing you can do is wait for that melting process to sort of end, which yes, can be stressful and you can lose plants because of it. Once that's done, you will have immersed plant growth and your plants on its way to the next stage in 
being taken care of. Assuming your plants have gone through this stage already, or you've gotten plants that were already grown immersed and you got to skip that step altogether, you're at the stage now where all you need to do is remove the limiting factors for it to stop growing. Because your plant wants to grow like a weed, you're just not letting it. So there's a few things that you want to look at. One is the individual requirements of your plant. Some plants are very adapted to being grown underwater and don't actually need CO2 injection in the tank whatsoever. Other plants are grown right on the edge or the waterline of rivers, or they're grown in waterfall or like very rocky creek sort of environments where there's lots of humidity because of water splashing up and, and splashing into the air, or they're just like mosses and stuff like that that like to be grown with lots of access to atmospheric CO2. Once you understand the individual requirement that your plant needs from you, you just need to mimic that. So if you're at the point where you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna give these plants exactly what they need to thrive. There are three pushing things, so adding to your tank, that will really force growth. The rest of the things are lights, fertilizers, and CO2. If you're watching this video in the first like six months of it being posted, right now we've got a promo on the fertilizers, but I'll explain that a little bit later in this video. Diving into those three things, it creates the holy trinity of plant growth. It's like a triangle, essentially. Lights, nutrients, CO2. If you grow one of those three things faster than the other two, you're gonna have some serious issues and that that's issues ranging from low oxygen in your tank all the way through to green water in your tank and algae just growing like mad, which I've just experienced recently. So to absolutely simplify this, and it's not a limiting list, but to keep it really, really simple, if you're looking for lights, go for the Ely Magic Pixels, freshwater range, they give you the entire spectrum that you need and they are adjustable up and down, meaning that while you're adjusting your trifecta, you can increase intensity and decrease intensity. Second, CO2. Any brand will do, there's cheaper ones and there's more expensive ones, your choice. The third thing is fertilizers. Now, this is a weird range because there's some amazing ones and some crappy ones. So to keep things simple in the fertilizer game, you are going to need a basic fertilizer and trace elements so that your plants have got everything they need to grow. Now, if you're viewing this video in the first six months of it being posted, you're in luck because I twisted the boss's arm and convinced him to run a promo that's crazy. So if you buy a Delua Fat Pro fertilizer, which is your basic fertilizer, you get fat traces absolutely free anywhere in the world. Links in the bio or the description or somewhere, I'm sure you'll find it. Jump on that because that solves one of those three trifecta. And this doesn't mean start dosing caps and caps and caps of this. You can't follow the instructions on the back straight away. You need to make sure you slowly introduce your tank to lighting increases, nutrient increases, and CO2 increases all at the same rate while watching what's happening in your tank to make sure nothing's going south. Now, once you've dialed in those three main points, you want to essentially remove any issues with your plants growing. So a lot of those issues are to do with whether the light is blocking the plants, whether there's algae growing on the leaves, or whether there's not enough iron and micronutrients in your tank for your plants to thrive. These things get used up quite quickly when your plants start to grow well. They're also responsible for the extra red coloring in a lot of your plants. Now, if you've checked all the boxes, you know, you've got your stemmed plants buried correctly, you've got your rhizome plants attached to things, you're not causing any unnecessary stress on your plants and they're just not growing fast enough and you have no idea what's going on. There's enough flow in the tank, the light is penetrating and going all over your plants, everything's totally sweet, then it's probably just there's not enough nutrients, not enough CO2, or the lighting's not intense enough, that's it. Once you've dialed in the plants, you're making sure that their temperature requirements are fine, the way that they need to be planted is fine, and they're just not growing fast enough, then it's time to increase your trifecta, which is really quite simple. Increase CO2, increase nutrients, increase lighting, and do it ever so slowly. The way to know you're doing it right, get yourself like a CO2 indicator so you can actually see what's going on CO2 wise, gas wise under the hood. If your CO2 indicator is within range and there's not enough plant growth and the nitrates are always low, there's not enough nutrients. If your CO2 indicator is yellow, too much CO2. If your CO2 indicator is a darker color, too little CO2. If your CO2 isn't that high, and your lighting isn't that high, yet your tank is like almost green and there's algae growing everywhere, too much nutrients. Always peel it back to that holy trinity and you are in the clear. Now, if you're sitting on some like golden egg of information for how to make your plants grow that you feel like the entire fish community should know about, 
let me know in the comments below. Other than that, guys, follow this account to get closer to your aquarium hobby.